Hi, I'm Megha Daga. I'm the Senior Technical Marketing Manager for our vision products at Cadence. So today we are going to talk in continuation to the last topic which we discussed, which was the introduction to CNN. And we will go a little more deeper into the architecture, the layers which are used in CNN. So before I go into the architecture or the layers, I want to talk briefly about two things. CNN can be in two phases. There could be a training phase or there could be an inference phase. Training phase is the more involved phase where uh, we are basically taking in a lot of data as input and going through a, feed for a feedback pattern and creating these filter data sets, which are then used for the inference phase, which we will be going into more detail because inference is something which we do the real time application. Now, going into the real time application, this is the similar diagram which we discussed uh, in the last session where we saw we have an image and the image, uh, a patch of the image goes through different parts of the layers and then finally gets detected as top three categories. Here it says it can be either a leaf, 97% probability, or it could be grass or it could be a bush. But obviously 97 probability it's a leaf, so we know it's a leaf. Now going into detail of each of the things. Let's first talk about the very first layer, which is a convolution layer. Convolution layer, as the name says, is the core block of the CNN. And what it does is it takes a bunch of filters which will get applied to the given input image and create different activation features in that input image. So what we have, we have input as the parameter, which will be, let's say, width times height times the depth of the input. Let's remember it's a 3D. We have kernels or let's say filters, and these could be any dimension. So let's say we have a three by three filter. This could be one by one, five by five, seven by seven, one by seven, anything. And it will have the same depth as the input. Then we have number of kernels or filters, which is basically number of activation filters, which we are going to generate for our given input image. So let's say that is N. Once these set of kernels are applied to the input and output is generated from the convolution which will have the same spatial dimension as the input and the depth of the output would be same as the number of kernels. Now two things here to talk about. The spatial dimension is also dependent on a factor called stride. Stride decides how you want to process your pixels. So if I have a stride value of one, I'm processing each and every pixel, so my dimension is same as input. But let's say if I have a stride of two, that would say I'm processing every other pixel in the image, which will you know, take my output dimensions to w by two and h by two. So stride will basically act as a downsampling, but here we are giving an example of stride of one, so we are processing every other sample. So that's the convolution layer, and the importance of convolution layer, as we discussed, is to get, uh, extract the activation features from the given input image. And by that, I mean one filter could be extracting the edges of an image, one filter could be extracting the colors of the image, and so on and so forth. Next, another common layer used is ReLU, or what we call is the non-activation layer non-linear activa non activation layer, sorry, non-linear activation layer. Non-linear activation layer, there are several ways of doing that. One of the ways is ReLU or there's a leaky ReLU, there could be sigmoid, there could be tangent. And what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to bring that non-linearity into our network. By definition, when we are seeing something, we have a lot of non-linearity into our environment. When I'm looking at, um, at a table, the table can be at various angles, but I will still recognize it as a table in my brain. So my brain can process that non-linearity. But convolution, by definition, is a linear function. So we need to add some non-linearity, and that's where the ReLU comes into picture. So what that will do is it will take a take the input data, this is just ReLU, and as I said, there are different ways of doing this. ReLU is one of the most common ways to do it. 
uh, everything which is less than zero will, will be made zero. So all negatives are made zero and the positives stay as is. So that's where it brings that nonlinearity in your data set. And hence, uh, uh, it removes that overfitting probability and makes it more adaptable to a real world case. That's where the ReLU comes into picture. The next layer is pooling. And pooling is another nonlinear layer, but it's specifically used to downsample. As we can see in this diagram, we have gone half the size. So what I'm using is a pooling of two by two. What I mean, pooling will get input from the previous layer. So like in this case, it's getting this input. So it is having this w by h by n as the input. And then it output will depend on the window size. So if I have, let's say, my uh, window size as 2 by 2, then what it's going to do is it's going to take every 2 by 2 window in my convolution layer and minimize it to one pixel. Now, there are different ways of doing pooling. The most common way is max pooling or average pooling. Let's say for a 2 by 2 window, what it means is I have this 2 by 2 input data. And it has some value of something like this. And after I do my max pooling on this, I will just have the max value picked out from there. And I will say it's 9. So it brings that nonlinearity, and it also downsamples. Now, why is downsampling important to us? Most of us know CNN is known for its compute heavy and its memory heavy uh, issues. And with pooling, we are able to reduce the size and hence reduce the computation complexity and the uh, memory complexity. And hence, it's very beneficial. That was pooling. And this kind of network keeps continuing till one of the another most commonly used layers, which is the fully connected layer. Fully connected layer, the objective of fully connected layer is to identify or detect the final output categories. And that's why it's in the output stages. So in this layer, every node at the input is connected to the coefficients. So it's very data heavy. All those coefficients are getting loaded in. And what it will do is, uh, uh, after processing all of them, it will create these bunch of output data. And we will pick the top three using some probability distribution algorithm like a softmax or SVM and say, OK, these are the top three, and this is the probability associated with it. So that's the importance of fully connected to get the output. But as, as I just talked about, fully connected is very compute, uh, very load driven, and it makes a, a network load bound. And hence, as the ages are progressing, as the networks are process progressing, people are moving away from the fully connected and making these networks more and more convolution uh, prone, so fully convolution driven networks, and make it, making it more compute and compute heavy rather than load heavy to make it balance out for the architectures we have these days. So that was all about, um, or a little about, uh, the architecture or the layer definitions in the CNN. And uh, that's all for, I have for today. Thank you for uh, watching this uh, session and hope to see you next week. Thank you.